how is it to play Carnegie Hall and get to sing um, one of the greatest Jimmy Webb songs of the many great Jimmy Webb songs? It was the hardest Jimmy Webb song. <laughs> so MacArthur Park, yeah. yeah. It was uh, challenging, and for some reason he really wanted to hear my version of it, and it, um, it was one of the most amazing things I ever did. It really was. You, I mean, you really got to be able to hit, you know, several octaves. You got to be able, you're in Carnegie Hall, you're doing one song, you get no warm up. You walk on stage and 20 other artists have done every other Jimmy Webb song, and you do MacArthur Park. And uh, it was it was very amazing. He told me um, that he didn't know how old you, he wasn't sure how old you were, but he wished you could be his big brother. <laughs> he said, "I think that he's." He said, "I think that uh, I'm actually uh, older than him, but I still want to be my big brother." So yeah, he's about 15 years yeah. older than me. He he uh, in rehearsals that day. I've been up about an hour, and I went to rehearsal. And MacArthur Park is like an opera song, yeah. and the one high note I wouldn't up long enough to sing it yet and I told him I said uh I'll a little whiskey and a little time this evening I said I'll nail that note tonight you know like an opera singer and he goes I know you will and then that night when I hit it he looked around at my people and said if I drank more whiskey could I sing like that <laughs> but it it is a very powerful piece it was a perfect storm you're in Carnegie Hall you're singing Jimmy Webb and you got that song and Everybody that was there probably thought, why is this guy having to sing that song? And then when they heard it, I think it was Perfect Storm. Was well, how was it to play in Saudi Arabia? I, this sort of came out of nowhere for me, but how was it to play? Uh, uh, it was very historical. It was uh, the first concert by anybody from this hemisphere <laughs> to ever play there. They haven't had a uh, native, a, na a Saudi national play there like in 30 years. So the guy I played with, Rava, he, he doesn't get to go do live concerts. They, you know what I mean? It's a, uh, they're, they're, uh, they have very strict religious rules on things that you can do. And uh, so to be invited by them to come play in their country, they're also bringing uh, the Globetrotters. They're, they're doing a USA Saudi soccer game, drag racing. So the feels like the Kings reaching out, trying to adjust to the to the times. And uh, just so happened while I was over, Trump was over there, but he didn't get to go to the show. But depending on what news you read, that's y'all prove me wrong if you want to. <laughs> so what what was the experience like to play with a with a, a person who's playing a completely different kind of music? It was a uh, I had uh, 10 or 11 pieces over there. I got one of the best bands in the world. Half of them play in the studio in Nashville. And all of us together combined had a real difficult time trying to write a chart on what they were doing. Their music is uh, very unstructured, uh, it's very different. And But me and Rabba found one little common spot where we could jam together. And we did, and we made history. So, how was the crowds over there? Because a lot was made by the fact that it was a, a men-only crowd, which is part of the religious rules. But was, was it strange? It was very small, and it was very invited. So I think the thing was set up to where um, only the people, that, most of the people there, I think, were invited. But there was only like it was more of an event that was put up on TV. So it's more like a studio audience instead of a, I mean, it's in a, I don't know what kind of arena it was. It was a, smaller than a hockey arena, but at the same time, uh, somebody told me there was some public that got in, but there wasn't, there wasn't enough seats there to handle very many people, but they were very friendly and they were very ex uh, accepted to what I did. And, uh, I took the challenge of it being historical and uh, being the only person on this side of the planet that ever got to play there live. So. Did, you, did you do any of your songs or did you? And it paid out the wazoo. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, right? You're going to go to a different country. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, uh, did you do any of your songs or did you do, uh, I'm, 
I did. I did. Uh, well, I was representing our. I was representing us Americans. So I didn't just want to play um, all my. I had eight. I had eight or ten songs. So I played four or five songs I wrote. Me and Robba played "Should Have Been a Cowboy" together. I played on one of his songs, and then I played uh, four or five songs I wrote, and uh, and then I did four or five classic American uh, songs. Just I played like "Sitting on the Dock of the Bay," uh, "Ain't No Sunshine," Memphis. I did a little Chuck Berry. I did a little Bill Withers. Uh, Otis Redding, you know, I just played three or four American classic songs that I thought represented uh, America really well. And then four or five of my songs, and they were very receptive to all that, but I thought there might be a chance that the Outer Fringe might have heard some of that. So it was nice to be able to go in and represent us and play some covers. So how was that to play the inauguration? Because this played that earlier this year too. It's been a big year. What about the inauguration? How was it to play the inauguration? I played, I played uh, uh, Peace Prize for Obama in uh, Oslo. I played at the White House for G George W. Anytime the Commander in Chief invites me to come play at a, at a ceremony for, uh, for our country, I'll go. And I don't care what anybody says about any of that. I'm big boy, I can take the heat. I'm your guy. Does, does it feel like an honor, I mean, to get to play? Hell like yes, it's an honor. The President of the United States asks you to come do something or you get to attend an event where the President is, you always go. You know what I mean? I've never had that experience. Well, I mean, you, you, it doesn't matter which one you play for, you're going to get you're gonna get flack. And most people don't want to go because they don't want the flack. And I, I take it as an honor. So you working on any music these days? I'm always writing. i got a couple of different projects in the can right now. And uh, I got a single coming out pretty soon. And the next, uh, real quick, uh, Wacky Tobacky. Wacky Tobacky? Yeah. Was Willie Nelson in on it? Yeah, Willie Nelson's in the video. He didn't sing on it, but he's in the video. Smoking a big J. <laughs> it's always good to talk to you. We always have fun, don't we? So, is, did I cover everything? Is there anything else I don't know. I, I don't know. Poets Award inauguration, Saudi Arabia, which I was just fascinated. I didn't realize we were to this point with Saudi Arabia that they were letting people come over and play. And Jimmy West, who really did tell me in the green room, I moderated his Q and A of his book signing in Oklahoma City, told me that you were a huge hit at Carnegie Hall. He said you never know with New York audiences, um, but he uh, he also said that he never had a big brother because he was the oldest in his family. But if he could pick his big brother, he would. Well, he having uh, his audience not suspecting, not expecting me to deliver that song. And his audience would have been like, that song would be like his keynote song, you know what I mean? And then all these artists standing backstage going, why'd y'all pick him sing that? The reason they picked me is because no one else wanted that song. They don't have to deliver it. Then you're at Carnegie Hall, so you got the perfect storm. And then I kicked the shit out of it and they go, wow. So it was like double sorted deal, it was like, shoot fish in a barrel. Is that kind of like if the president asked you to play, you say yes, if Jimmy Webb asked you to sing MacArthur Park, you say yes? It was a challenge, and then nothing challenges me more. Have you seen the replay of it? Oh yeah, I did. I was, I was, yeah. I was actually really excited because, you know, they, you pick, they pick some of the people you would expect to play certain songs, but then they pick some people that you wouldn't expect. Like, they would expect you to play one, perform one of the country songs. Yeah. And I kind of liked it that they picked songs that you wouldn't necessarily expect yeah. people to play, so. It was perfect for me, because so. that's right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, it was cool. It mm -hmm. was really cool. Thank you.